Like the other main circuits, ABC and Gaumont British, Odeon operated a management and film booking service for cinemas they did not actually own. Under these arrangements, some otherwise independent cinemas had their films booked for them by Odeon and were thus able to take advantage of the more favourable terms that a mass booking policy could offer. Of course, this did not happen in areas where there was already an Odeon theatre. Odeon could not be expected to book films for their immediate opposition. Theatre management of independently owned theatres was rather more complicated. Whereas film booking could be done for a flat fee, management services usually involved a percentage share of the box office returns. Under management agreements, the upkeep and refurbishment of the building was the responsibility of the theatre owning company. Odeon theatres provided managers, staff, film programmes and advertising and looked after the day-to-day -day running of the theatre. Often, a management arrangement was the prelude to a full takeover of the cinema, overdraft as well. In many cases, as with some of the theatres that will be described in detail later on in this film, independent companies owning a single cinema could not keep up with the mortgage repayments, and Odeon were able to acquire a theatre that they were already operating on very advantageous terms. These were the great expansive years for Odeon cinemas. Much like Sainsbury's supermarkets are today, they were the number one choice with the public. Cinema goers wanted an Odeon to be built in their town. They felt that an Odeon would enhance its status. Some seaside resorts were so proud of their Odeon that postcards were on sale of it as view cards to be sent home by visiting holidaymakers. The taken over buildings, together with the older properties and the circuits that were acquired, all gave the Odeon chain strength, which enhanced the booking power that in turn gave greater choice of product to Odeon and gave it more muscle to negotiate terms.